Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, this is Aaron. He's traveled down from Atlanta, Georgia to do some bucket lips fishing. You know what that means. It's time to get, get into, into the, the bite. Woo! Wahoo in the boat, baby! Look at that kickfish right there. I mean, you talk about epic fishing days. Yeah! Nice bulldog right there. and do some bucket list fishing. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grab us an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, it's another beautiful South Florida fishing day. On the agenda today, we're gonna to head offshore and try and do some bucket list fishing on the boat. We got a gentleman who's driven down from Atlanta, Georgia, just to come fishing. Say hello to Aaron, everybody. We've been talking about this for years. Aaron has been contacting me since I had almost started the channel and we've been trying to go fishing for literally about four or five years now. Running out right now, there's pretty much no breeze. We're heading towards the end of the beautiful morning, special guests, hopefully the fish are hungry. You know what that means. We'll see you out on the water. And so Aaron traveled down from Atlanta, Georgia, and he said, hey, I got a few specific fish I'd like to target. So I said, hey, what are the fish that we're trying to go after? He said, oh, I like mahi, kingfish. I really, really, really want to get a false albacore and any other tuna. I said, all right, let's see what we can get done for you. And so as we're heading offshore, we got less than desirable conditions. We got a northeast wind. On the southeast coast of Florida, a northeast wind really makes the fishing tough especially for offshore, it drives a lot of your pelagics away. But I said, hey, let's give it a shot anyway. We'll see if they're out there. So we headed on out, we threw out some lures and we're going for the mahi mahi. And they just seemed to not show up that day. So we kept pressing on to the area where I knew there were large tuna roaming around. Before we knew it, that line started zinging out. We just got hooked up on the first fish. Still still on there, right? Oh yeah. Let him run. Oh, good. Whoa. Oh, it feels kind of tuna-like. All right, pull back. Way on the way down. Pull back. Right on right now. We got Aaron on his first fish. Woo! Nice little smoke job too on that reel. Yeah. Oh yeah. You want right. me to run for my money still? Yep, he is. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the boat this way and right. get the fish off to the side. We're in the thick of the weeds, so you have to kind of watch what we're doing here. Remember this fish for a while. <laughs> you remember that sound of that reel yeah, peeling out, huh? Sang. Yep, right around 830 feet right now is where we got our first hit. Traveling through some scattered weeds. No jumping action yet, but that is never a telltale sign. So Aaron is learning that we're always keeping this boat in gear. Always, yeah. Towing our fish. That's how he's gonna get worn down. So I think we just made his trip from Georgia a little bit worthwhile. Oh yeah. Yeah, you having some fun? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. You know, he, whoa, whoa, whoa. Here, here's what you're gonna wanna do. Walk over here and go sit down on that cooler. Yeah. Your sea legs are non-existent, my friend. Yeah. There you go. I thought I had them, but. Uh, there we go. All right, there we go. A little bit better right there now. Oh yeah. There he is, he's down there. Don't oh, stand up. I do see him. Georgia first fish right. solid skipjack tuna all right so there you have it a nice solid 15 plus pound 
skipjack tuna. That's how you knock one fish off that bucket list for a man who's traveled far. All right, so here's the thing about doing bucket list fishing and trying to actually target specific fish and make it happen for someone who's sitting on the edge of their seat virtually, is there can be some letdown. The conditions weren't perfect, but we went for the mahi and they just didn't show up. So we got this one nice fish and I said, all right, let's move on to our next target species. Why don't we run back in over the reef and see if we can nab a kingfish. So we headed on in and we decided to drop out a couple of planter lines, see if we could get a king to bite. And so we trolled around for a while without any king bite. And I decided, okay, hey, let's see we can get the one fish that Aaron has really been dying to get, false albacore. And with me, I know there's one way to guarantee a sure hookup with these, and that's with the white bucktail jig. What we're gonna do now is we are going to head into the steep ledge of the second reef and about 70 feet of water. And we're gonna do one of Aaron's favorite things, which is trolling the white bucktail jig. See if we can uh, get into the bite real quick with it. Got a reef coming up. We're right in about 90 feet of water right now, so I'm gonna pitch it out. Let it out real quick. This is the good thing about trolling with spinners like this, is you're up and trolling in a matter of moments. Here we go, check our drag. Golden. One up and done. You can see our ledge building right here. We're gonna be trolling over sand. Oh, but we're already on. Oh. There you go. Get your fish. Get your fish. Didn't take that long now, did it? All wow. right. There we go. Fish. Right. He's on his fish. There you go. That magic white bucktail jig. Don't tighten that drag. There we go. Fish. That's what we were looking for real quick. Couldn't even I mean, get the, the uh, second rod out, right? There we go. Instantly. Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking for. That's how people have fun. More than likely going to be a little false albacore, which is another bucket list fish right here. And we'll find out. Well, he came all the way from Georgia. Hopefully he's, uh, you know, going to go home with some stories. Oh, thank you. He's got a, he's, he's got a couple of them. <laughs> I do. Yeah, hey, he might. When he gets in the boat, he's going to get mad, take off. dream fish a nice solid juvenile false albacore and just to make it more exciting we threw them out and kept getting back on it with it. fishing isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. You are targeting specific creatures and it doesn't always pan out, but if you can get at least a couple like we did, man, that makes it for an epic adventure. When you're doing bucket list fishing, you gotta have your ducks in a row. You're gonna need to deploy several different tactics trying to get hooked up with specific fish. What's biting? Where is it? What's your wind? What's the conditions like outside? Or is it cloudy is it sunny all this is going to factor into can you make it happen for this person and that's bucket list fishing for you all right folks that about does it for this episode hope you enjoyed i hope you had fun and i hope you learned a little bit about bucket list fishing and how to make an offshore trip special for someone 
so that there's not big letdowns for their great expectations. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.